morning. Good morning. Today is a glorious day. So the announcements this morning, uh, welcome to worship. There's much to be celebrated today and we are happy to have you here. Tuesday Bible study will be at 1 p.m. in the Family Life Center related to the sermon and God's great story in our lives. A celebration of life for Diane Vandermeer will be held November 22nd at 11 p.m. Oh, sorry, 11 a.m. They did, they put that in there so they knew I would mess up. Um, a lunch and reception will be held immediately following the service. Please continue to pray for the Vandermeer family. Um, Presbyterian women are collecting full-size shower gel, body wash, and body and hand lotions. These will be given to Lindsay School through Care House. Gift cards and candy will be added. Lindsay is a school for teen mothers and mothers-to-be. Please bring your donation to the church and place them in the wheelbarrow in the narthex. We also have prayer quilts this morning. Please don't um, pass them by without leaving a prayer. And please note the beautiful new fence on the south side of the church. A result of our push to keep CBPC in good repair and your pledges. Also thanks to our facilities and property committee for their hard work. If you would like to serve, they would welcome your participation, especially the gentlemen in the church. And today, we welcome Reverend Liz Wilson Manahan to lead us in worship this morning. And after worship, there will be a congregational meeting to learn more about Liz and God's calling for her uh, through the PNC. I personally am pleased to introduce her to you. Liz grew up in Fresno, California, her parents, Joe and Kathleen Wilson, still live in the house that Liz moved into when she was five years old. Liz has two sisters, and forgive me if I'm Jackie and Rena, and she is the middle child. They are a very musical family. Jackie is a professor and opera singer. Rena is also a performer, voice teacher, and commercial actor. And unlike most children, they did not play sports growing up. From a very early age, their regular activities were dancing, singing, and acting. The three sisters performed at three different theatre companies throughout their youth in Annie. And Liz went to Cal State Northridge with her sister Jackie and majored in comparative religions with a minor in Jewish studies. All three of the sisters belonged to the same sorority, Alpha Omicron Pi, A.O. Pi, as my daughter corrected me this morning, and although her sister was an AOI at San Jose State. And Liz studied for her Master's in Divinity at Princeton Theological Seminary, graduated in 2005? 2004. And since then she has pastored in New Jersey and most recently in Oceanside as an Associate Pastor for Education, Caring and Spiritual Formation. And Pastor Liz loves people, music, and watching others come to follow Jesus. And favorite Christian song? Do you have one? Oh, okay. Um, and so just a, a quick synopsis. We'll find out a lot more about Pastor Liz at the end of the service. And one of her favorite verses will be the focus of today's Bible reading and reflection, Jeremiah 29. Come, let us worship the Lord today and see what manner of love he has for us. And I now invite Adoracion to come up front, please.
glorious way to start the morning. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Our awesome are your deeds, O God. We sing the praises to your name. Come and see what God has done, turning the sea into dry land, bringing us across the River Jordan. How awesome are your deeds, O God. We sing praises to your name. Even when God has tested us, even when we have gone through fire and water, God has brought us out to a spacious place. Our God is an awesome God. Let's all join together in both Spanish and English singing Holy, Holy, Holy. The words of the bulletin, first, first will be in English, and then all the adoration and all our Spanish speakers will join in, and then we will sing the remaining in English. Thank you. to the Holy One, who covers us with grace. Loving and gracious God, we confess that too often we fail to trust you. On our own, we fall into sin. We forget that you are more than enough, and more than ready to meet and help us. Forgive us, and give us more faith, more joy, more power, and more love, that we will be fully yours in the coming year. In this moment of silence, we put ourselves in your hands.
In Jesus' name, amen. In the assurance of pardon, there is no one like our God who forgives us and calls us to new life. Nothing separates us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. All things come through his grace, and we offer that grace to others. Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done. Glory to God. Would the ushers please come forward?
tithes and offerings be used for your glory, that all of us may grow in your kingdom, that as we seek you, we may find you, that CVPC would be a light of your love and your grace and your mercy. This morning we pray especially for those who are ill, both those we know and those that we don't know. We pray, God, for your healing mercy and your healing love to surround them. God, we also pray for the families of those who have recently lost a loved one, especially as we approach this holiday season. God, we pray for your strength and your peace and your wholeness. And God, we thank you on this Veterans Day weekend for all of those who have served you, who have served this country, and who have laid down their lives for a brother or sister. We thank you for the gift that they have given us. And God, we also praise you for this moment, for this time and this place when we can come together and worship you. We pray that it would nourish us, that it would strengthen us, and that it would send us out to be your people wherever we go and whatever we do. And God, as we worship you today, we remember that you are with us, that you are guiding us and protecting us and walking with us all the days of our lives. And that when we pray and join together, that you call us to be a powerful light in this world. And we pray as we pray together the Lord's Prayer that your light would come. Let us join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God.
greater things. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in the city. the sake of the elect, so that they may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful. For he cannot deny us himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I know I've already been introduced, but uh, I will give you a little bit more of an introduction. My name is Liz Wilson Manahan, and I have been ordained. I graduated from seminary in 2004, but I've been ordained as a pastor since 2005. And you can see two of my family members up front, uh, George, my husband, and my older son, Will, our three-year-old, needed to ask to go to the nursery. He didn't want to sit here anymore. <laughs> Not that he didn't want to sit here among you. He just is three, th I'm sorry, three and a half. He's very insistent about that nowadays. Um, we currently live in Carlsbad, but we are so grateful for this opportunity to see how God is moving in this place and how God is moving in our lives and moving all of us together. I know that God has something incredible planned for this place. I don't know what exactly what it looks like, and we're going to talk some more about it as I preach this morning, but what I do know is that God is on the move, and he is going to continue to work here and in our lives. So would you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you for the mysterious ways in which you move in our lives and the mysterious ways in which you call us. And God, we pray that we would be faithful to you and faithful to that call. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, I have actually preached here one time before. It was outside. It was when you were still meeting outside during really the height of the pandemic. It was in April of 21. And I was actually candidate, I was actually doing a neutral pulpit for another congregation. And I remember saying to George, my husband, I remember saying to him, what a beautiful church this was, and what a beautiful place it was, and what a beautiful, welcoming, lovely community. And we talked so much about the potential of this place, 
and how much was yet to be done. Um, I love the song that we sang this morning because it's really what I'm going to talk about more this morning. But I really believe that God is still on the move in this place. And God is still on the move in Chula Vista and that we get to be partners in that. But I also believe that we have been in a funny spot. The church in general, universal, not just Chula Vista, but the church in general has been in a funny spot. I don't know if you remember what we've just come out of a global pandemic. Yeah, thank you. Please continue to laugh. I love it when people interact with me because it makes, it makes it feel like people are with me. Um, but yes, and really as a community for most people, that was a time of exile. Because we had to be trapped in our houses. And yes, we still had to go to doctor's appointments and do all the things that we had to do. But we weren't able to do together. We weren't able to be in community with one another. I know for me as a pastor, one of the hardest things was there were people in the hospital and I couldn't go visit them at the hospital just to hold their hand when they were sick. And ill. There were we had friends in my previous time in my current congregation who died, and we couldn't be there. I love that. And so I really do believe that we are coming out of, although we continue to be as the church universal, in an exile period. And so we have to learn how to live in exile. So what does that mean? So the, the passage I'm going to read today talks about just that. It talks about what it means to live in exile. So as we approach this passage, we're reading from Jeremiah. Jeremiah is one of the major prophets. Not because he was that cool, but major prophet. The whole reason is that his book is longer than some of the other books. So he's major because his book is longer, not because he's that much more profound or special. He just talks more. Uh, but he wrote to the people who were struggling with the Babylonian exile. Now, <clears throat> if you remember your biblical history, maybe you don't, maybe you do, but there, the Israelites were in captivity and in exile twice. They were in exile in Assyria. And then they came back. And when they came back, pretty soon after that, they were in exile again. And then the second exile that they were in was the Babylonian exile. Now, the Babylonian exile was different than the Assyrian exile. And the reason why was that the Babylonian captive, uh, captors did a funny thing. Most of the time when someone, would, when someone would come in and take over, they would take everyone away from their home. But what the Babylonians did is they left half of the people in Israel in Israel, and they left half of the people, they took half of the people to Babylon. Um, and they did this in order to really divide the people so that there could not be uprisings from the other people, from the, um, from the, the captured people. So Jeremiah, in this 29th chapter, is writing specifically to those who are in Babylon. And before I read it, you may remember one of the verses from the 29th chapter, it's the wonderful verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I love that verse because it does promise us that God is going to give us a hope and a future, but I also love scripture because we, when we take it out of context and just have that one verse, it's really beautiful. I have framed in my office uh, a frame that has that verse on it. And in that picture are five of my other friends that I graduated from seminary with. We were young 25-year-olds at our friend's wedding, and we have journeyed together for the past 20-some-odd years. And it has been beautiful to see the things that God has done for us, the hope and the future that God has had, had for us and planned for us. But there's also been some of the other stuff that we're going to talk about, some of the exile stuff some of the hard stuff, some of the let's work 
together stuff, to see the future, the hope and the future. And so we're going to be reading, if you want to follow along with me, I think the number is in your bulletin this morning. We're going to be reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, beginning at the, 14th, at the 4th verse. Jeremiah says this, he says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. And do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon, when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you. And I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, declare, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, and not to harm you, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I have sent you into exile. This is the word of the Lord. So why in the world did I choose this passage, a passage about exile, on the day that I'm preaching this candidating sermon to you? Well, I think, and I said this a minute ago, but I do think that we are in a moment in the church universal where we are in somewhat of an exile. Every church I know, every pastor I know, is struggling. Struggling with what God would have for their congregations, what God is doing in their place. And I think this is because for many years, if you built it, people would come. You would move into a neighborhood, much like the history of Chula Vista or any other church, if you if there was a new community being built up, then you would put a Presbyterian church there, bada boom, bada bing, you'd have a church. But about 30 years ago, maybe more than that, but about 30 years ago, that really stopped working for the most part. And so we as the church are still trying to figure out how to be the church, how to be the kingdom of God in exile. I think Jeremiah leads us to the right place. I 100% think Jeremiah leads us to the right place. And the reason why is that the Israelites could have moaned and complained and struggled with being in exile. But what does Jeremiah tell them to do? He tells them to seek the prosperity of the city in which they've been planted. He says, seek the welfare of the city in which you've been planted. And I think that's what the church in exile needs to do too, is to seek the welfare of where we have been planted. <coughs> See, the Israelites, and the Israelites were in exile for not a moment. They were in exile for 70 years plus years. What they did is they planted gardens and they married off their children and they sought the welfare of the city. And I think 
that that's what we are going to get to do together. I think we're going to get to seek the welfare of Chula Vista. Last week, George and uh, my mother-in-law, we drove around looking at Chula Vista. We looked for where we might move in the next six months and where God might be calling us to live, and we really got to see the neighborhoods. And we got to see some really lovely neighborhoods, and we got to see some neighborhoods that are struggling. But I know that what Chula Vista Press can be is a place of hope, a place where people can come and see the light of Christ, a place where if someone says, oh, do you know about Chula Vista Press? They're going to say, oh, yes, I know, because they're caring for my children. Yes, I know, because they're seeking the welfare of their city. Because we are doing it together. I know that for many of you, you, you have been members of Chula Vista Press for a long time. Through the good, the bad, the ugly, through church change, pastors changes, cultural changes. And that's not always easy. It's hard. But I know that God is not done with this place. And I know that God is not done with any of us. And what we are going to get to do together is to learn how to live flourishing life in exile. Because God is with us. And I'm going to admit that it's going to be hard work. It's not going to be easy. But what it's going to mean is we're going to get to know the neighbors across the street who live in the houses across the street. We're going to get to know the principals and the teachers at the schools that are within walking distance of this place. We're going to get to know the mayor and the city council people. And we are going to be the light of Jesus Christ to this community. And we're going to do it together. Now, I'm also going to be a super traditional pastor, too. I'm going to preach biblical sermons on Sunday mornings, and we're going to laugh together and cry together and be the community of faith together. But I also acknowledge that I may push you a little bit. Maybe a little harder than you want to be pushed. And please, if I'm pushing too hard, tell me to stop. And I will listen. I, you're laughing, but I promise. I will. I will listen, and I will slow down. Because I I want to be here for a long time because I want to see the work that God will do in this place and the work that God will do in all of you because I know that God is already working things out. And God is already working things out in each and every one of you that you may continue to find what God is calling you to do and how God is calling each and every one of you to partner, to be a light for Chula Vista, to seek the welfare of the city. Because Jeremiah points out this, he says, when you seek the welfare of the city, you will also find welfare. Because when we seek what God wants us to do, we also find hope in it. It's not just about giving or doing or being good. But rather, it is about finding a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ as we seek to serve our community. As I said before, it is going to be hard work. It's going to be good work and joyful work. And I don't have all the answers, and I want to learn what some of those answers are from you all. But what I know is that I am being called to be your pastor, to love you, to serve you, 
to shepherd you to Jesus Christ. But together, we are going to figure out how we can best use the gifts that God has given us to be the church for this city, just as we are the people that God has gathered here in this moment to do this work. And we will joyfully see what plans God has for us, for our hope and our future. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful that you are never done with us, that you continue to speak to us, to work in our lives, and that you teach us through your word who we are to be. And God, we are thankful for the work that you have set before us. And we pray that we will be faithful to you. And that we would find our hope and our future and the welfare of this city. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our sending song this morning will be hymn 132, Come Great God of All the Ages.
the welfare of the city in which we have been planted. And so let us go and do that together. And now go in the grace, peace, and love of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.